Hey everyone here and doing the second to last video. This will be the last real meaty one uh, and the last one we'll just kind of wrap up and do a conclusion. And we're going to go over applying some of the organization tactics and structures to our sample projects. I'll try not to get too technical, too in the weeds here. And like, since these projects aren't even real, uh, I can just come up with, with solutions and ideas, but I don't want to alienate too much people who aren't necessarily doing website projects or, or tech projects, so to speak. So I want to go, just apply the principles. It will still be a little abstract, but let's see how it goes and hopefully it's helpful to you. So our first example is this uh, new to developer warehousing one. This is actually probably the most complicated of the examples because we have so much going on and the client has kind of just thrown the management of the whole project onto us. This will happen a fair bit, especially with people who are new to developers. They just give you a big idea and expect you to sort the whole thing out. And there can be good money in that, but it can also be quite stressful. So it's very important to break this into parts. Uh, on a very high level for this one, I would be breaking it into the warehouse section of things and the like website slash user interface section of things because we have really two very different projects that one is about scanning and managing inventory and the other is about displaying that inventory on a website of some kind. Naturally, they're going to be all interlinked and that's where the complexity comes in. But thinking about data on the warehouse side, the data is the, the database of packages. How is that gonna, what kind of technology do we wanna use? What kind of database table? What's the table structure going to be? That sort of thing. And on the website side of things, the data is just the information that's going to be on the site, the text and the images and the branding and that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, it is going to interlink with the other database. But just for the sake of keeping them separated, we can think about them like that. When it comes to admin, uh, for the warehouse side, we really want to think about like manual overrides or how our administrators going to be able to modify information in the database. So it's not exclusively just through scanning. So if something leaves and the scan doesn't work, they can still change information. Are we gonna to have to build a user interface for that? Are they gonna access a database? Like how comfortable are they? On the website side, how are they gonna update text? How are they gonna manage users? That sort of thing. When it comes to user, in, um, user experience, uh, on again, the warehouse side, we're really talking about employees and managers. How is the scanning going to work and how are they going to, you know, override, as I mentioned before. Hopefully this in our made up example would be taken over by an existing system. But if not, we're going to have to think through all these complexities ourselves. My cat is right behind me. Uh, and on the database side of things, this user experience is really about design. What are the different charts we want? What are the analytics? And of course, what are the different views when it comes to our company administrator compared to our customer. And that's working all those designs out and the user experience with the client. So breaking things into back end and front end here is somewhat useful, but I think most important in this project is breaking those two parts, the warehouse part and the website part. So in this case, I think that's more useful in some ways than front end and back end. But then what you could do is look at each side of that and house the front end and back end. Do we want to use a CMS on the website side? And what's the display going to be on the warehouse side? So it's not like the warehouse is back end and the website is front end. They each have a front end and back end. Um, finally, architecture. Yeah, this is going to be complicated. You're going to have to think through all this. Re really, just the way we split it up begins to have give a sense of architecture, how they're going to talk to each other. The data flow, luckily, will pretty much be one way from the warehouse into the website. And the website won't really talk back to the database and affect its information. It's just a visualization of it. But we will have to figure out how to manage users and um, make sure that the permissions are OK. And, and so there is some back and forth. So architecting this one, I don't want to try to get into too much. We could spend hours going over it. But it would, again, those two, those two streams of development would really help when thinking about how to architect. And your major questions are going to be about how to make sure it's flexible enough to be updated, how to make sure that it is providing the right information and that we don't run into bugs. And ideally with architecture here, 
you could look into some existing solutions when it comes to visualizing data or when it comes to you know your scanning packages stuff and that would really be a big part of your architecture okay our next one is our special agent where you are basically hired to go into a client's existing project as a specialist now again as in the last one this is pretty easy from the the organizing scoping point of view you just let the team guide you you just ask questions for what you need but organize your small area and you want to be able to give the rest of the team feedback where they haven't given you enough information don't just try to figure it out all by yourself ask questions even kind of stupid questions it's okay uh, it'll be better than you developing something and finding out it's not in line with their specs or their uh, whole situation ask questions about the data uh, ask questions about how it's going to be managed in the future and, and also ask questions about user experience and user interface if you can clearly ask these kinds of questions then you can prevent yourself from having to rebuild it multiple times because the developers didn't tell you enough uh, you do have to make sure you are confident enough to discuss this with the developer or you can tell them that you're kind of new to working with other developers on a large project but you really know your niche and so you tell them what you need you ask them about the situation and work within their parameters right so let them guide everything don't try to take over one other thing to note is use their project management tools and follow their examples when it comes to things like branch naming conventions and all the variable conventions just follow along with that you don't need to argue <laughs> they have some reason and go along with it okay example three are very common type of early freelancer uh, project which is like a small website for a small business so the data here is really just the text and images that the client needs to put on the site maybe they need some products as well if they want to actually sell products online that's adding a layer of complexity that you need to scope out but let's assume they're not and it's just text and images that's our data so that's what you need to get from the client and you need to make sure you have that uh, when it comes to admin how is this going to be updated chances are the client is going to want to update things like hours or they'll see there was a misspelling or something or they wanted to add some more text on there maybe a new menu item so how are you going to do that are they going to have to get in touch with you or can you use some kind of cms or website creator service like wix or, or wordpress or so something of that nature so that once you're done the the first raw creation you just hand it over to the client and they run it from there that's what I probably recommend. Otherwise, you're going to be inundated. You're going to be on the hook forever for updates. When it comes to user experience, that's probably the biggest focus of this kind of site. So you really want to spend time with the client, making sure you know their branding, get a few example websites from them and kind of try to merge the designs together. Make sure they have enough room for feedback throughout the process and I really help I really find it's helpful if I give some template ideas to the client and then I can build from those templates rather than starting a design completely from scratch so I would look to organize this by getting all the clients ideas about design strongest picking a CMS and things like that and then uh, just moving on with it we don't really need to worry about architecture and some complicated stuff like that so in our last example this is again this is very amorphous since I haven't actually made the potential project that some academic institution would be asked against to make a proposal for but in an abstract way we can look at how you'd be organizing this you wouldn't actually need to organize the project itself until after you've actually gotten it you'll this is such a different kind of project because you don't you're not talking to someone who's ready to hire you you're talking to someone who's ready to get you to write a proposal and then they might hire you and then you actually have to start the work long after you've done a very detailed proposal so really the focus here is writing that proposal and organizing that in a way that if you do get it your proposal will actually still be useful to you so you're going to have to make tons of independent decisions here you're not going to be able to really work with the client or like ask them what works for them because they're not actually your client yet they just want you to write a proposal uh, for data, I'd still really, really recommend if you have to write some kind of proposal, get some examples of the data from them, from your contact or whatever. You need to know how, what format that data is in and see some examples 
Otherwise, it's very difficult for you to organize how you're going to propose to store that data and update that data and do all the things you need to with APIs and everything. So get some examples from data scientists. When it comes to admin, ask those questions of your contact, how much they want to be able to update this kind of information or build it in. One thing in these proposals that's really great is if you can anticipate what the future needs will be or anticipate needs that the makers of the, the project didn't even think about. So they might not even thought about how much they're gonna to have to update it in the future, but if you put that in your proposal, they'll see you're a very intelligent, organized, confident, experienced person. And it, it they'll be like, okay, this person definitely knows what they're doing. We'll probably just go with them, even if we don't know the technology they're talking about. So bring up things like updating, how they're gonna use it, make, it, make some suggestions if they haven't made that a key part of their proposal. Otherwise, of course, you want to outline it very clearly. So for user experience in general, these kind of projects from academic institutions don't include a ton when it comes to design. They are, tend to be more uh, data heavy, science heavy, and not so much about like we're making a very pretty site. So if you can provide some examples of your past designs or designs you would recommend for this kind of project, or even just give some key words that would tend to be useful for a project. So you might say something like it should be a serious minded, intellectual, very simple and easy to use user experience. You're just kind of ticking off some boxes so that they get all those. And some examples of that or some key things. Mention mobile. Mobile is often forgotten in these kind of proposals, but mention the importance of mobile. And otherwise for user experience, it's probably not as crucial to really scope out as long as you just talk about how it's important because they're not that deep into the project. When it comes to architecture, you are gonna lay this out in your proposal, but you're not gonna do it to the depth you would uh, in your own internal thing, but think big is what I say here. So think beyond this project that you're writing for, and also make sure it's written for a large scale of the project that you're doing. Rather than it being one small website or even one guy's warehouse, you're really doing this as an almost abstract idea of this project and anticipating that it's going to be going for years and years, many people are going to be involved uh, and that kind of thing. That tends to be what these projects are like. So you need to make it in a kind of very big, very comprehensive uh, way. And the technologies and structure that you recommend should be in the light of something that's going to last for a long time. So as you can see with all our projects, they are fairly different in how we are gonna break them down and organize them internally with data and admin and user experience, front end, back end architecture. But ultimately all these projects, you can break down their complexity into these parts. And it all depends on the, the, or the relationship between you and the client and the type of project for how you're really gonna structure this. I don't have a, a, a sheet, a paper sheet like I did for the last practical section because this is so broad. But at the same time, I hope the principles can help you. And if there's any more that was unclear here or that you want to know about with some more specific project, I'd be happy to break that down. Ultimately, I hope this was helpful. So we'll see you in the conclusion in the next section.